We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery, a reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. I'm joined here by my co-host and recording artist, Lolita Robinson. Well, hello. How are you? Welcome to another day day of Joy in My House. I'm glad to be here. How how are you doing? I'm hanging in there. I'm (laughs) hanging in there. Okay. You got me to be inspired. Okay. We got to keep that kind of on low, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Yeah, and I'm hurting. Okay. I'm hearing it's a lot more difficult than I than I thought. When you really submit and you really let the Lord have his way and dedicate. We realize how much our flesh rules our lives, don't we? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And not even my mind anymore. Now it's really what my body craves and to to have it stand firm, wow. Well, a lot of people use January as a month to consecrate themselves, to give it to the Lord, to have you know blessed year, and to surrender to Him. And it is not easy, not at all. So, so I'm only been doing this three, four days, maybe five yeah. days. Yeah. Well, you keep so. in there, hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers out there who are listening and viewing for being a part of jo- the joy that we have in our house here. I want you to know that you can find us on Facebook backslash Joy in My House. You can also find us on Twitter backslash Joy in My House, and you can tweet us with any questions or comments for our guests right. or our us yeah, ourselves. Yeah, call us, you guys. Come on, we love to hear, have people call, but as long as they're listening. Our studio line is 323-473-3100. Our number's right at the bottom of the screen. You're more than welcome to call with any questions or comments. Uh, like to recap last week's show. Last week we had an amazing guest, oh, she's Gina awesome. Graham. She's awesome and so humble. The work that she has to do. I mean, she is in the front lines. You know, you talk about the American sniper. There is in the spirit realm. There's uh, gifts that we have that we have to combat when there's hostility in families. And she's on the hotline, on the on the front line. And that's a great analogy because dealing yeah. with domestic violence is such a it, it's a physical thing, but it really emotionally really tears right, up, right? Tears up inside. And I hope that people will um, go to her event. I don't yeah. know whether or not you will recap it or whatever, but uh, and then also, you know, send in funds to help sponsor because they're a new profit, aren't they? Yes, their nonprofit is at the Coach House. Yeah, it is this Sunday, actually today at five o'clock. Oh, are you going to go? Uh, I am not going to make okay. it today. I am spending the day with my daughter, my okay. youngest daughter, my mother. Okay. But really, go out and support Gina Graham and and her event, the Towers of Power. It's an opportunity for you to give back to her ministry, right? Which is a nonprofit. She has dedicated her life. Yes, yeah, she has, and um, to how this the Lord has opened up because it's uh, where she's out there in uh, Riverside. Riverside County. Yeah, and there's not a whole lot of people out there, I think. Well, she's just starting out, but they need help. They really do. Yeah. So I want you to, I want to thank all our listeners and viewers for being so loyal and for supporting all of these causes that our guests have. Uh, it, it's a great opportunity more than anything for us yeah. to give back. When you, and you've had an opportunity, <coughs> you've met a lot of these people from the red uh, red carpet events, right? Yes. When Daphna does for the children. The children United Nations, right, yes. Right, right. So it's awesome how God has been bringing you th- these people. Oh, yes. And, you know, God has the right people in mind. Yeah. I always make all these phone calls and try to control and manipulate and book the show. Mm-hmm. And when I just sit down and pray about it, they call me. He comes and they come on. It's you know? amazing. It's a real honor to do this. It really is. Yeah. So I want to thank you guys out there who are listening and viewing. Know that you can stream us live on any mobile device. If you just download the app, Ustream.tv, type in latalklive.com, type in Join My House, and you can stream us on any mobile device. But know that our website has been upgraded now. You can stream us live on any mobile device on www.latalklive.com. That is a network's website. That is our studio here. Know that they have an array of shows here. Yeah, we're not do. the only show no, here. We're not, and we want to give them, you know, congratulations and props for this year too because it takes a lot to do this it really does yeah and you would really know because you you know you put a lot of time in putting the show together but you know there's room for everybody so there really is so i want you to 
link up i want you to find alitalklive.com you can also find it on facebook find out what's going on with the different shows here also know that if you link up with us you receive up-to-date lineups of guests and information and you can quest, uh, give us any questions or comments through twitter.com or send us a facebook That's message right. as well and i always want to say hi to van and we have peter it's off camera we have a very handsome photographer and and our in-studio guest oh with my his mother goodness. you know what you never know you never know. Always be kind to people because you never know. When they walked in, his mother's beautiful. And I thought she was going to be on the show singing because I wasn't sure who's. And um, I don't want to say anymore. I'm just blown away. When we come back, ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Gill, he is an inspirational, motivational speaker, and he speaks on the behalf of the youth of today. You are not going to want to miss. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, this is Joy in My House. I want you to stay tuned. Lita Robinson Coppage and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Ro Williams and I would like to invite you to join GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes under R&B or watch us live on Ustream TV. We are Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, on LATalkLive.com. We're more than just talk. We're Heaven's Party here on Earth. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show. I'm joined here by my co-host and author of Shaped by the Master's Hands, Very Lolita good. Robinson. Very good to be here, and I'm excited. And our in-studio guest, Anthony Gill. Oh. Anthony, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. I'm mm-hmm. glad sorry, to be here. Sorry, sorry okay. Well, well I'm going to clap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yay. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Anthony, you're 12 years old. We met at Daphne Zyman's uh, event, six, the, her 16th annual Day of the Child event. You actually gave a big speech there, which really riled up the crowd. Were and you the, the keynote speaker? He was not the keynote speaker, mm-hmm. but he's the only one that gave that speech. It was a, it was Everybody gave up and said a little something, but you had a full-on speech. You had a full-on message. It wasn't just for the adults because it was um, a lot of youth there, correct? Yes, sir. So, this is going to be really interesting. This is exciting. What yeah. was it like? Well, Go ahead. what was it like being on the red carpet with him? Did you interview him? I did get an opportunity to interview him. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was most impressive was his composure up on stage. Uh, there was quite a few people there, and when you spoke, you really had a message for everybody. Because you spoke to the to the foster kids, and you also spoke to the adults, which was very impressive. Uh, his his, his Mother Elizabeth is smiling there because it was it was very powerful. I was impressed. I think you were speaking to me as well. And you will be giving a message today too at the end of the last commercial break, correct? Yes, sir. So h- how did you prepare? Um, well, to prepare, my mom and I first went over some of the main things that we would have to cover mm-hmm. during the speech. 
and then she would she would wrote the speech um we she let me study it after she was done Mm -hmm. um i was able to see i was able to practice on the movements i might make and how other people how the people might react to me and then it was once i got there i practiced in the car the whole way there and then when i got up there i just realized that i know i'm doing it um from memory but i also have to do it from my heart oh boy wow (laughs) was that a mouthful so (laughs) well i do want to let our audience and viewers know a little bit about you your family your family of origin and how you got got involved in public speaking so let's start off you're 12 years old where did you grow up anthony um, well, I was born in Inglewood, California, and I grew up in Lancaster, California. Mm-hmm. Um, um, my friends, most of my friends, well, my neighbor actually right now, um, we were friends in Inglewood for the two years I was there. Um, when we mo- I moved out to Lancaster, his family came one year after, so oh we've wow. been friends since then. Well, that's very cool. And my family we they've been really supportive of me mm-hmm. and they help me all the time even if i get into trouble sometimes which i do <laughs> <laughs> thank <laughs> and you you're normal <laughs> and they after they tell me that i shouldn't have done that or i the ways that i could have made it better they help me to understand what i did wrong and how i can improve well that's beautiful <laughs> well that's what parents do you think we're kind of pains in the you know what sometimes? <laughs> 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 well, I do want to ask about your faith because I think it's, especially for our show, such a platform to share Jesus with our listeners and viewers. When were you introduced to Jesus? When did you know about Christ? Um. Well, on the way here, my mom was telling me about when I was first introduced to Christ was when I was three months old. Wow. I was baptized into the Episcopal Church. Oh, you're so and Right now, I'm an acolyte at my church. My mom and I, we are readers. What's an acolyte? Well, an acolyte is someone who helps the pastor and the assisting minister. I help them. I help pass out communion. Oh. Um, I carry the cross, and I also hold their binders for them while they're reading the ceremony. Wow. That's so neat. How old were you when you started that? Um, I started it. One year ago when I was 11. Okay, all right. We're asking you last stuff when you grew up. You're still in the process, you know, so that's pretty cool. Well, let's talk about your testimony because I had an opportunity to read your testimony. And you said that your grandmother was an inspiration to you. Mm, yes, sir. Tell me a little bit about your grandmother. Um. Well, first of all, my grandmother, she's the only female boxing trainer in the Caribbean. What? <laughs> Are you kidding? And your mom's pretty tough too, huh? <laughs> yes. <she laughs> um, my mom grew up um doing karate. By before she moved out here, she was sixteen. Um, and she already had a second degree black belt. I mean, brown belt. And then, sh- well, after a couple years, while I was at, um, she got me into karate, and I did that for a couple years. I've Right now, I'm a purple belt, and my mom's a blue belt. I only missed one test because I got sick that day, so I had to make it up the next day. Okay. Mm. But I guess having grandma being uh, inspirational in that <coughs> excuse me, that vein of um, athletes, you kind of were watching how she did her business or how she could, what, what got you involved in? Um, well, my grandmothers, my grandmothers actually teach me to um, be a boxer, me and my cousin. And so now I'm going to have two different skills of being a boxer <laughs> and karate. And a speaker. Mm, well, people had it. better listen. That's <laughs> all I got to say. <laughs> 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 well, that's very good that your mom had the fortitude to put you in programs that gave you a lot of structure. Mm-hmm. Your mother being a trainer, which is in, in, in a sense a teacher, a coach, uh, gave you that foundation. And then your mother taking over and putting you in martial arts, I thought was very great. So I wanted to talk a little bit about your mother because she did train in martial arts. Tell us a little bit about your mom. Um, well, first of all, my mom is a great m- mother. Um, 
I'm thankful that she brought me into this world. Aww. I'm glad that she's always there to support me and to help me with my work and anything I need. Um, when I was going through some issues in school, she would always be there to support me and to help me through the troubles. Oh, I can and see the emotion in your eyes. I can really see it, you know. And she's always been there for me. Mm -hmm. It's just but you and her, right? Do you have any br no brothers um, or sisters? Well, I have a brother and a sister, but they're my da they're my dad's children. Okay. And I see them every year when I go to Belize on okay. my international school tour. Well, mm. Wow. Okay. Very good. Very good. Now, your mother not only is was a teacher, but now she's a nurse. So she's be been very proactive in supporting you. She has. Um, and one of the things that my mom has taught me when I was um, in her class at school, she gave us a CPR lesson and she took us to the, um, the hospital that she worked at mm -hmm. and she, she allowed the class to take their test for CPR. So now my entire class and I are all certified for CPR. That's beautiful. And you know when you were talking, your mother being a nurse gives her compassion on both ends. She's a trainer and knows what to do in terms of you being probably, um, what do I say, um, on tasks, disciplined, but also having a heart of a nurse. She can be very supportive and be there when you have human needs. So that's pretty cool what God did, isn't it? It is. Yeah, very cool. Well, I wanted to ask you, because you, know, you said in your testimony, your grandmother was an inspiration. Yeah. And your mother, obviously an inspiration and still a teacher to you, a, a great figure to you. But I wanted to touch on this just a little because I think a lot of people have this challenge, have this situation, because your father does not live in this country. No, he does not. Where does your father live? He lives in Belize. So how is that? Yeah. Um, well... I, I know I'm not a I'm not I'm not with my father all the time, but it's teaching me that I have to learn how to be a man sometimes on my own. Um, it helps me with a lot of things, dealing with stuff that I can do. Mm -hmm. Um, being with my mother and my family. Mm -hmm. Um, it's mostly women, so I have to learn to be different from them. Sometimes yeah. I have to know how to control myself in dis different situations mm -hmm. but and your uncle you have your uncle you were telling me yeah. about him too huh i do have my uncle yeah um he c he works all he's working every day besides for saturdays mostly mm -hmm. um and every time that he comes home he goes into his room puts on his music um and when i go in there all the time he asks me to help him with stuff like moving his speakers around mm -hmm. helping him with the equipment mm -hmm. um he also allows me to dj sometimes in his room <laughs> <laughs> now, so now you're gonna be a dj too <laughs> <laughs> i really want to stay connected with you you can have live jobs for everybody <laughs> <laughs> my goodness <laughs> well i wanted to touch on because although your father lives out of country god has placed people in your life that have mentored you and have shown you how to be a man and one of those uh, persons is Mr. Ivan tell me a little bit about your relationship Mr. with Mr. Ivan and who he is um well um Mr. Ivan is one of my partners in my Bully Free LA in Bully Free LA um he another um partner that I have is Mr. Edward Ed uh, Edward Morgan mm -hmm. um they're both my partners from the LA Fire Department Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, and wow, they when I met them first um, at the well, I'm not sh I, I don't remember exactly that's where I okay. met them. That's okay. You can be twelve. That's cool. I don't um, remember. I'm, I'm not <laughs> telling you how old I am, but <laughs> <it's cool. laughs> um, but they when I met them, they all they told me that when they were ch when they were kids, they were also bullied. And that's why they started this program. It's called Believe for LA? Uh, Believe Free LA. Okay. Right. And so now we go around to different schools talking to the children about how bullying affects not just you, but the person involved and how it can affect people in different ways. Oh, boy. That is powerful. Well, I wanted to read off some of your accolades because as a young man, uh. you've done quite a bit. You've done quite a bit. First of all, you were the youngest recipient of the Key to Belize City.
for your outstanding drive and determination to create a youth voice in an adult world. Tell us what that experience was like to receive the key of the city. Um, well, it was really great. I was able to meet the mayor. Um, he was the one who um, gave me the key to the city. Um, so, um, TV um, stations were there. Um, it was just really great to be the youngest recipient of the key to Belize City. It's such an honor that I have now to carry this key with me. Um, it adds to my purpose in life. Mm -hmm. um, Amen. <laughs> and now a lot of kids in Belize, in Belize look up to me a lot because of what I've done for them and what I've given back. Well, wow. how, you know what? How about, how would you tell somebody, yeah, yeah really, that. really? What would you tell a young child who might have a lot of responsibilities that you have? I'm sure your mother, because you were telling me about sports and football and things that you do, volleyball. What do you, would you tell somebody who has a lot of responsibility? How would you handle pressure? How do you handle that? Um, well, how I handle it is when I go at school, I do my work like I'm supposed to. I still have fun with my friends. Good. Um, when I'm at home, I, I relax. I be a kid all the time. I, mean, I play with my dogs. I watch TV. Good. Um, I like to play with my toys. Um, and I, w but when it comes to my work, I'm always there. My mom, sometimes I try to watch TV for a little bit longer so I, did, well, so I don't have to. Um, but I know that work is important and it will get me through in school and I can get a good education from it but at some points it does get a little boring so I do want to just <laughs> relax well good so that's what you're telling the A students out there and the people that are high achiever do your work put your work get it done but relax that's a powerful message how, well, how did he get in I'm sure you got some well I wanted to also touch on about the bullying yeah well, we're gonna get to that because okay. we were talking about your accolades and wow. you also became the youngest official member of the pronounce that? Um, the Tuskegee Airmen. Tuskegee oh Airmen my goodness. of the Los Angeles chapter. Tell us what that's about. Um, well, the Tuskegee Airmen were the African American men and women who fought in World War II. They protected the bombers on their destination, um, to drop the bombs off at their destination and to guide them there safely. They were the ones who first encountered the Germans. And being a part of that is just a great honor. Um, everything I do with them is documented in history. Wow. Um, what do you guys do? Well, they have their meetings um, every month. Um, I'm not able to go to them all the time because of school and other stuff. <laughs> right. Um, but when I'm there, they always congratulate, congratulate me on what I've done. F and um, last year... Two years ago, um, after I came back from Belize, I asked my unc one of my uncles if he could make a plane um, for, the, um, for the president of the Tuskegee Airmen. And so he was really proud of that, and he thanked me a lot. And also, they have these conventions that they have annually. I've been the keynote speaker oh, for geez. two of them. I know one was in Washington D.C. What? And <laughs> what? When I when I went there, me and my mom thought it would just be with all the Tuskegee Airmen from the different chapters, but then we found out it was people from all over <sighs> Washington D.C. Um, different states just coming together for that one convention. There they were selling some of the stuff, some props and things that the airmen used um toys and stuff like that and they it, they also had they also brought one of the planes that they used in world war ii wow. and it was just really nice to see one of the see an actual plane that they used and it was just a real it's just a really great experience oh mm -hmm. my goodness anthony this is well like i said it's amazing the things that you've done at such a young age yes and it's very humbling too if we think that the Lord needs us. Forget it. <laughs> he blesses his youth. This young man is just a testimony to what God's gifts can do and, and be in a life. And kudos to your mom. Beautiful mm. woman. 
Well, I wanted to also touch on this, and I think this is the main topic of our of our of you coming on the show. Uh, besides the message that you're going to give during the last segment, but bullying in school, I think there's a lot mm. of talk about bullying in school where before it wasn't talked about. Before it was just part of growing up. Be a man, they used to say pick yourself up by your bootstraps kind of thing but now we're really talking about the emotional and what happens mm -hmm. in these schools because you did experience some bullying in your school because of your success tell us about that um well it wasn't just because of my success it was because of my age and the color of my skin and stuff like that i'm i've always been the youngest in my class because i started early so kids mm -hmm. were always picking on me because of that and then when i started becoming successful with my speeches Kids would um, think that I'm getting, a, that a I'm above head. them mm -hmm. um, because of what I do. So they would bully me for that also. Uh, and they would just tease me on the things that I can do because of my age and how I am. What would they say? What, what, what kind of bullying? Like, um, Well, so at school one time for PE, I had, we, ha we have to use shorts and, and, um, well, stuff like jerseys that basketball teams would use. Mm -hmm. So one time I brought my green basketball shorts and my green sh basketball shirt. Um, and they everybody started calling me, well, some of those kids started calling me leprechaun and stuff like that. Oh boy, it sounds funny when you get older, doesn't s but that's that's huge. That's really huge. That's a big deal. Now, one thing that I wanted to touch on that I had an opportunity to read on your testimony is that some of the people that you thought were supposed to protect you were actually doing the opposite they were doing a little bit of harm and you said this in your testimony and I want you to tell me what ended up happening because you wrote that the principal would segregate you but he would say that he was doing it to help you but it was be it was a detriment to you and you felt that tell us about that um well he would put he would put me in a corner away from the other kids because he would say that that they're distracting me too much. But that only distracted me more because I wanted to see what was going on and what the other kids were doing because mm -hmm. most of them were my friends. Um, and when he did put me in groups, I would actually work with, with them. They would help me. I would help them. But at some point, um, it would get a little too hectic. They might do something wrong, and some people might blame it on. They might blame it on me, mm -hmm. and then he would get mad at me for doing something I didn't do, and he would wow. put me by myself. So you, so you do feel okay, like you said, it had to do with color, it had to do with your age, and it also had to do with when you started speaking more. So can you understand? I know you can understand kids that are celebrities at, at youth, you know, the young artists and who have talent. Is that hard to be in the position that you're in? Um, it is, but at the end of the day, it's all worth it. He's so cute. Um, just going out and speaking to youths and adults, it inspires me to be a better person. Mm -hmm. So you're not letting them get you down. <laughs> no, I'm not. But like he was talking about yeah. the protectors, you know. Well, thank God your mother listened. Thank God your mother listened. Well, I wanted to also ask you, what would you say to somebody out there who's listening and viewing who might be going through some of the same struggles, some of the same challenges that you were going through in school. What would you say to those kids? Um, well, I would say to focus on what your, your, what your goal is and to don't allow the other kids or people to discourage you or to make fun of you because of what you can do. Amen. And what do you do when you're hurting, you know? It's okay to hurt, isn't it? It is. But what you do is you go to... You go to an adult or your parents or some family member that w that is willing to help you and that will always that will be there for you. Good, good for you, good for you. Well, it looks like to me that you learn through the hard things, through the challenges, and I'm sure your mother and your family are. are you don't take it personal, do you? You don't think it's you that there's something's wrong with you, do you? Oh no, I don't. Very <laughs> good, very good. Well, I wanted to also ask you, why are you so passionate? to be the voice of today's youth? I think that's an important question because you've gone through your challenges. It's made you who you are. But now you're also giving back. You're also sharing your challenges, your struggles, your pain, as Lolita just mentioned, with everybody. Why are you so passionate about it? Um, well, one, 
as my mom was getting her nails done yesterday. All right. So <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> the person that the person that was doing so it, cute. um, he he was telling me that he he was telling me that pe- kids this d- kids these days th- we all have common sense, but they don't like to use it a lot, and that actually t- it, it's actually true. Um, when I'm at home. I like to be crazy, and then I notice that some of the things I do, I shouldn't have done it because it's not the right thing. So what I want to do is I want to give back to our youths, and I want them to realize that you have to use your common sense. You have to do what is right because you kn- you're taught from a young age that what is right and what is wrong. So you have to do the right thing so you can get rewards that you like, things that you like, you can get them if you if you work hard for them. Mm-hmm. Well, very good. And you can best tell people that. You can best tell people that. And I like the fact that you're very rounded. You know, you're not just talking about reward, rewards and work, 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 work. You're talking about work, 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 work. But if you have pain, 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 you talk about it, talk about it, talk about it. You play, 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 play. You have got a full message. You really do. Well, when we come back, Anthony Gill will be giving his message for all of us to hear. And if you haven't heard him speak, you're going to want to. But I want you to find out more information regarding Anthony. You can find him on Facebook, backslash Anthony Gill. You become a friend and receive up-to-date lineups of what he's doing and where he's at. He also has an Instagram page called I Am Anthony G. You can follow what he's doing there as well. You can also find him on Twitter backslash I am Anthony G1. I want you to come out and support, but I want you to stay tuned because when we come back, Anthony Gill will be giving his message. We'll be right back. This is Joy in my house, ladies and gentlemen. Robinson Coppage and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, I'm Ro Williams and I would like to invite you to join GospelRhythms.com every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for our show GospelRhythms.com Talk Live Radio. Join us as we celebrate Christians around the world in all genres of entertainment, as well as highlight interest stories on men and women who are making a difference and impacting their community. So don't forget to tune in to GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes under R&B or watch us live on Ustream TV. We are Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is GospelRhythms.com, Talk Live Radio, on LATalkLive.com. We're more than just talk. We're Heaven's Party here on Earth.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality radio show with a touch of recovery. A reality radio show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who says it. I'm joined here by recording artist and author of Shape by the Master's Hands, How you doing? Robinson. I'm glad to be here. This is so exciting. I want to thank all of our listeners and viewers out there who are being a part of the joy that we have in our house here. And I want you to know that we have a great in-studio guest by the name of Anthony Gill, who will be giving a message directly for us right now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Anthony Gill. I have an important message for all adults, parents, teachers, administrators, and leaders of our community. You can no longer continue to sit by and watch as you build upon the demise of a positive tomorrow. As adults, how many of you have been an honest source of inspiration for us as youths? How many times have you spoken to the young girls who continue to expose their bodies for attention? How many of you know that your daughters are freely sharing and exposing their bodies on social media, dropping it, shaking it, and twerking it for likes and shares? So. When you see teenage mothers, how many of you criticize them instead of educating them on the values and responsibilities of motherhood? When you see young men on the streets, how many of you have said he will be nothing because he comes from nothing? As fathers and male role models, how many of you are teaching your sons to be better men, to be respectful to women by first respecting young girls? You all as adults continue to question the outlook of our future because you have no true faith that we as children will one day be the positive forces in charge. Well, it is simple. In order for us to teach, we must first be taught. In order for us to lead, we must first be led. In order for us to effectively grow, we must first be effectively raised. Anthony, I want to thank you for that message. I know that it doesn't just touch the hearts of the youth, but also me as a father and the adults as well. What uh, inspired you from to g- that speech? Um, what led to that? Um, what led to that was seeing how now children are being left behind, um, how the parents are walking ahead, and that it's time for them to take a step to the side so be, so us as children can see the path that they're guiding us on. Do you hear like a lot of your friends talk about their families and how they wish they had l- more role models? Is this what your friends um, are talking about? or? Well, some of my friends do. Um, they've gone through losses in their families. Um, some They might have stepmothers or stepfathers and how they treat them in different ways how it affects them and how it f- how how they feel about it wow. wow yeah that's all i can say is wow anthony wow you're doing a great job for more information on anthony gill i want you to know that you can find him on www.iamanthonyg.com or you can go to www.thevoiceoftheyouth.com where you can book him for speaking engagements or if you have any questions or comments, you can email him directly through his website. Also know that he has a Facebook page where you can find him on Facebook backslash Anthony Gill, Instagram, I am Anthony G, and Twitter, I am Anthony G1. I want you to go out and support this young man because he is the future of us. As adults, we do need to make sure that we lay a good foundation for our youth so they can use us as a platform to get to the next level whichever plan that is that God has for us Anthony you are on a international school tour I want you to tell us about that because you do speak in engagements throughout the year tell us a little bit about some of the experiences you've experienced on this tour um well on this tour I go out to I go around the country and I also go to Belize City well, Belize, um, I have been to the different districts in Belize. Um, I speak to high schools, elementary schools, and I'm 
next year I might be going to a college also to speak and going on this tour allows me to get back to my roots and to meet some family members also. Well, what would you say to the college students? What's your message for them? Um, well, my message would be the same as all the, uh, the same as all, always, mm -hmm. um, to stay in school, do what you have to do to get a good education, and to follow your parents and to allow them to guide you on the way. That's beautiful. That's really beautiful. Not to get sidetracked. Anthony, the show is coming to a close. We always like to ask this of our guests. And the premise of the show is joy in my house. The joy that we have in the midst of our praise when things are going well, but also sometimes when things are challenging or we're going through struggles. What would you say joy in my house means to you? Um, well, what it means to me is that there, no matter what you do or what happens, there's always going to be joy around you. Well, that's really good. That's short and to the point. And find it, right? And you can, you found joy in the midst of a lot of pain. Is it possible to find joy even when you're suffering? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now, also, your mother that has been a big inspiration to you, she's set this foundation. She's been a teacher. What would you say to your mom for all that she's done for you? Um. Well, to my mom, I just want to thank her for all that she's done for me. And I'm really glad that she's always there for me. That's Amen. really good. Amen. That's really good. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joy in My House. I want to thank Anthony Gill. I want you to find him on Facebook, backslash Anthony Gill. I want you to find his school tour. Go out and support him. It is www.iamanthonyg.com. It is www, the voice of the youth. Anthony, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Thank you for your youth and for what you're doing. Yeah. For our youth. It's a real pleasure meeting you, Anthony. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joy in My House. I want you to catch us live every Sunday here at noon with in-studio guests with life-changing stories filled with hope and talents that will inspire you. This is Joy in My House, ladies and gentlemen. You guys have a blessed day, and we'll see you next week. God bless.